Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet on My TV Charleston. Week number four of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet on My TV Charleston, takes us to Daniel Island and Jack Canty Stadium as the battling bishops of Bishop England play host to the unbeaten Wolverines of Woodland. Good evening, everybody. Alongside Sean Mahoney and Trooper Bob patrolling the sidelines, I'm Zeke Beam. Welcome into week four of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Woodland comes in. They're 3-0. and they're at, they've, scored, they've outscored their opponents in three games by over 100 points. Bishop England on the other side, they get their quarterback back tonight. They don't know what to expect from their season. What more could you ask for from a rivalry game? Yeah, definitely. And like you said, Woodland has had probably the best start to the season they could have asked for, really rolling on all cylinders on offense, where Bishop England, they get to start to feel what that feels like tonight with their quarterback back. I know he's going to be a little bit on some limited reps, but it's going to be a true test to see, hey, we got Friday Night Rivals, we're playing a great team, and this could be the game we need to get our season back on track. Woodland has a very special offensive line. We're going to talk about them all night long, but the man who drives the ship, is senior quarterback Sidarius, uh, Sidarian Harrison. He's the reigning low country player of the week, offensive player of the week. He's a special player, talented, can run it and throw it. Oh, yeah, dual threat quarterback. He already has 600 yards passing in in three games. And like you said, this is a high-scoring offense. They get at you fast, they get at you quick, and he's the one who really writes the ship. And, and he's a little bit undersized, only 5'9", five, 5'10", five, but still can get that ball moving and it really drives this Wolverine offense. For Bishop England, the man we want to feature, Cole Predich. He's a senior. He loves this sport. You know how you know that? He plays center and he plays linebacker. (laughs) Quarterbacks on both sides of the ball. The guy just loves football. Plays both sides for Bishop England. Yeah, definitely. And just watching this kid warm up, he looks like a football player's football player. I mean, you, you see the neck brace on there, the big, broad shoulders. And you're right, center and linebacker, you don't really put those two in the same sentence a lot. But this guy really gets in the trenches, is a leader on both sides of the ball, and he's going to have his hand on the ball in offense. And he's going to be the guy leading this Bishop England defense against a talented Wolverine offense. Full face paint for Friday Night Rivals. We've got a great nickname matchup tonight, too. The Wolverines and the Battling Bishops. Week number four of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. The kickoff of Woodland and Bishop England is next. Chamber of Commerce night here in uh, Daniel Island, Charleston. Set for a big 2A matchup between Bishop England and Woodland. Beautiful night for football, 7.35, our kickoff time, 78 degrees and cooling here on Daniel Island. Holy City Heating and Air time and temperature. Holy City Heating and Air, we provide solutions for every season. Set for kickoff, Bishop England and Woodland. Bishop England comes in at 1-3 and three overall. Woodland 3-0, and oh, they've outscored opponents by 103 points so far this season. Palmetto Pride kickoff. And we are underway from Jack Candy Stadium. A touchback, and the ball will come out to the 20. Nice deep kick there for Bishop England to start. Woodland comes in 3-0 overall. A 2A Region 6 school. They've outscored opponents by right at 100 points this season. There's a look at the starting lineups for the Wolverines. Sedarian, Sedarian Harrison, Clarence Simmons. The backfield tonight, that offensive line is massive. Cam Pringle, Xavier Green, Gannon Kepler, Damian Warinke, and James Mosley are one of the better offensive lines in the state at any level. Pringle, we'll talk more of him as the night goes on. He's a big-time recruit. Big boys up on the front line for Woodland. Let's see how they really control the offense here in the beginning part of the game. Harrison in the shotgun. The back with him is Simmons. Harrison, little option this way. Kept it a little late, forced to the boundary and out of bounds. And... Nice physical stop on first down from that Bishop England defense. Good pursuit. A little extracurricular activity after the play. Maybe too much from Jack Mullen. And a flag on the play. Look at the Bishop England defense. Starting lineups brought to you by TEC Equipment's Reynolds starting lineups. And really, we talked about him in the open. Cole Predish there, the linebacker in the middle. It's a good secondary, very physical. Maybe a little undersized up front, but Fletcher, Ethington, Carl, good story on him. We'll tell you that one a little later in the game. Marcus Malden's the playmaker up front. 
Penalty did go against Bishop England. 15-yard penalty on the personal foul. Late hit out of bounds and a little too fired up from the battling Bishops to start the game. I mean, that's the kind of, it's the, you want to see emotion here on front end rivals. You want to see that intensity, but uh, you want to do it in between the whistles uh, for Bishop England. But they come out hot. It was a good stop. So let's see if they can keep up the momentum. Harrison, first and 10, new set of downs over the left side, dances and bounces for a couple of yards. Nice pursuit to the football from Charlie Ranny. He's got 29 tackles and two pass breakups. Now 30 tackles on the season. Randy up from his strong safety spot. Going to bring up second down at eight. Opening minute here of week number four of Friday Night Rivals. Driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Harrison. Little jet sweep this way. The short handoff will go for one, maybe two. Not a whole lot there. It'll bring up third down very quickly. It's a great wrap up there by Zach Hanel. Uh He kind of flies around the field for Bishop England, as you see there. Uh, he's he's lining up a little bit on the a little bit on the outside, not quite on that line, uh, and he's really the in. The, you saw there was great form tackle and. And uh, really helped get a stop for Bishop England. And if Bishop England can get a stop here, it's going to be a lot of momentum for them. The Wolverines have been lethal in the first quarter this season. Your first quarter score bug brought to you by David Ayler Law Offices. Third down, six for Woodland here. Play action, Harrison. Breaks contain. He's going to reverse field. Comes all the way back this way. He's got an offensive lineman downfield. Harrison will take a shot. And got it to his receiver on the sideline, but out of bounds. They'll say he caught it at the wow. 39. <laughs> Something magical from Harrison. <laughs> that looks like some, uh, it's some a, flare. It's a 22-yard <laughs> gain for now, but this one's going to come back for that offensive lineman downfield, I believe. Oh, there you go. It was almost too good to be true. I mean, But he scrambled <laughs> so long. That eventually a lineman had to wander downfield, and he was. He was 10 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Here's our first Cruz Chevrolet replay. Cruz Chevrolet on Rivers, you've got a friend in the car business. It's our referee, David Herring. Known him for a decade or so. He's the man in charge tonight. I mean, how athletic does Harrison look there? Uh, he... He was probably ran about 50 yards in that one play, going from sideline to sideline. But yeah, it was <laughs> make make some magic happen. But like I said, uh, the holding penalty definitely, or not holding the lineman down the field is definitely going to negate that. So a five yard penalty remains third down, third and 12 on the opening drive for Woodland. Harrison five wide sets his feet in the pocket, has all day. Bishop England covering, and now pressure finally gets to him. He flings it upfield, and coming back for the football and squeezing it, I think, is Jaden Garner. Check that. That's Clarence Simmons, the running back. He's doing double duty tonight. And that's a first down, gain of 14. It's our first Mr. Sparky first down of the night. Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. And what a catch. You see that Simmons kind of bobbles it here, but great concentration to bring the ball back in and... I'm just in these first couple of plays. You can tell Harrison really likes having that that offensive line to give him tons of time in the backfield. Harrison right now just relying on that big offensive line. Little option out this way gets it late to Gardner, and he's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Bishop England really doing a nice job running sideline to sideline. The ball came out late, but. Likely after the play was blown dead. Good pursuit by Jack Huey all the way across the field. Dixon Hardy over there. Bishop England is getting to the line on these runs, but the the key for them is going to be able to really hound out a uh, hound on that pass game. They need to try and get pressure on Harrison to make him throw the ball a little earlier. But it's going to be hard when you got big boys like Cam Pringle. 
uh, Cam Prinkle and uh, and James Mosley and all the other big guys they have on that offensive line. Second down, officially a loss of three on the play. Back to the 45-yard line. Harrison wrapped up and thrown down almost immediately. Upfield to make the stop was Bo Hewlin. And it'll bring up third down and long. And they love to run this option, and they've had a little bit of success so far, but great job staying with it, pulling him down by his fingertips. Oh, as a Hewlin. And that brings up a big third down here for the Bishops, who the uh, battling Bishops, I should say. Uh, we talked about the nicknames earlier. <laughs> but uh, they can get a stop here. It'd be uh, good momentum for them going into the, uh, their first offensive drive. Good look a second ago, John Canty, the head coach here at Bishop England. In his 15th season as the head coach, approaching 100 wins. It's been a lifetime in this stadium. More on that as the evening goes. Many of those familiar with the low country know the backstory. Downfield running free with maybe a step was Furry. But a step out of his reach was the throw from Harrison. And it'll bring up fourth down and Woodland will have to punt. Yeah, talking about John Canty, he's playing in the stadium named for his father, Jack Canty. His dad had 187 wins here, the 2011-2012 state championships. Both belong to John, now the head coach. This is a very impressive and long-standing Bishop England program. A lot of tradition here, and he's just a legend. And, you know, Bishop England, not the start they quite kind of wanted to the season but like you said if they want to make one of these seasons one to remember this could be the game to do it oh and that's not gonna that's not what you want to see on the punt formation looks like a jump off sides by bishop england couldn't tell exactly who it was bishop england one and three on the season they opened with a 29 to nothing win over porter gout and then injury injury bug kind of started to bite them a little bit a loss to First Baptist, a loss to Lucy Beckham. Obviously one of the bigger high schools in the Mount Pleasant area that continues. That program continues to grow. And we've had James Island, their loss in game number four a week ago. We've had James Island already this season. They are a very good 4A football team. So mm. B.E. playing up a little bit and playing some tough opponents. And right now a little banged up trying to get their season going in the right direction. They'll get their first offensive possession momentarily after that end-over-end kick from Harrison. It'll go for it'll go for 32 yards. Let's go ahead and welcome in the third member of our team down on the sidelines, patrolling the sidelines, if you will, Trooper Bob. They the only they've got the real one. The folks are going. And remember last week we had that torrential downpour. Nothing like that tonight. Nice game for football. I'm excited about it, and I'll send it back to you guys. Bob's just happy not to have six inches of water at his ankles right now. <laughs> I, I, he told me he was a uh, terrific uh, from head to toe last week. Uh, yeah, I definitely did not envy him from the puddles we had uh, <laughs> over at Porter Gab. Offsides penalty on Woodland to start this drive. First possession for Bishop England. Starter for Bishop England, the quarterback, David Kuhas. is a baseball player for four years. He's a football player for one, and now he's the starting quarterback for the battling Bishops. A little toss sweep this way and some running room, I think, for Dixon Hardy, and he has a Mr. Sparky first down. Here's our, take a look at our starting lineups for Woodland. It's an active defensive front. Blanding, Ford, Pullian, and Addison. Good set of linebackers. Pullian, Marcus Jackson, and Chance Green, Gannon Kepler. That was the group that Eddie Ford bragged on in our call earlier this week. He really likes this linebacking core. They're very active. They really run to the football, and there you see him. Good pursuit on first down to hold Bishop England to a one-yard gain. 
It's going to be tough on the ground today for the battling bishops. Uh, they, they're really going to have to be consistent with their offense. And like we talked about earlier, uh, Ben Lordy is going to have to be real physical. Uh, he's dangerous in space when he gets the chance. But if he's going to battle with some of these big guys, uh, especially in that linebacker, linebacker room for the Wolverines, he's going to have to have a tough, t- tough test out there tonight. He's the goalie on the soccer team <laughs> and a running back on the football team. Kuhas, time to throw up the sideline. Nothing there. Oh, that's a third two. long upcoming for Bishop England. We thought we might see, and we talked about it in our open, Marco Pampu. He thought he might come back and play a couple of series tonight. John Canty was telling us that, and he's not in uniform down on the sideline. Got hurt last season, tore his ACL, came all the way back. Senior quarterback, team leader, expected to be a real impact player for the battling bishops this year. Then he got hurt in a preseason scrimmage against Stahl, and he just hasn't been able to get quite back. And since this is a non-region game, maybe could have played a couple of series tonight. Held out of action. Third down, rolling and throwing at the sticks for the first down is Kuhas. Might have been Chase Miller over there on the sideline. It was. And the battling Bishops, the first team to cross midfield tonight. They move into Woodland territory. Look at our crew Chevrolet replay. Yeah, Kuhas with nice arm. You can see the baseball strength in that throw. But yeah, Kuh, uh, uh, Bishop England not looking too bad with Kuhas at quarterback in. And if, he can, if he's going to be making throws like that all night, uh, it's going to be a good day for the Bishops. Uh, Chase Miller, uh, great reception there. And just that little button hook route that really gets defenses. Lordy in motion. A little counter coming back this way. And it's stacked up in the middle by Woodland. Really active defensive front. Junior Ford, you see, getting up off the pile. Aaron Pullian, big-time linebacker for this team. It's Friday Night Rivals. Everybody's big time. Everybody's big time tonight. <laughs> this is the time where uh, <laughs> where everyone gets their five seconds of fame, and, you know, we'll, we're glad to do it for you guys. <laughs> talking with Coach John Canty, he, he was talking about last season in the quarterback situation. This team, uh, Bishop England, had five quarterbacks play last year. I'm not sure I've ever even heard of that. Five yeah. quarterbacks for a high school team. They were that banged up and had that many issues with the injury bug. Third down, oh. and... Escaping the first couple of pursuers was Kuhas, but couldn't get away from Ford. Junior Ford said his name for the second play in a row. Ford is a sophomore, and he has started every game in his high school career on that defensive line. Started every game as a freshman and all four this season. And he's a big reason this Woodland team is 3-0 and and trying to improve on that here tonight. Third and the Riverbanks. For Bishop England here. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, need yeah. Almost, they need almost 20. <laughs> Kuhas rolling right. Going to take a shot. Has a receiver just out of the reach of, I think, Lordy. Check that. That was Dixon Hardy. Five, not three, and it'll be fourth down. And Bishop England will have to punt. Kuhas was able to make a little magic last time on third down, but this time just over through uh, his man Hardy, and you, you talk about for, uh, Antonio Ford, Zeke, uh, 5'11", 300 pounds as a sophomore. This guy is 15 years old, 300 pounds, and if I had that guy chasing after me in the backfield, yeah, I'd be a little a little nervous tonight too, so Kuas definitely has his work cut out for him. You always like it when you get the, the two deep from the, the coach, you get the depth chart from the coach with the starters, and he gives you Junior Ford, and then uh, on his depth chart, and then on the actual roster, it says Antonio Ford. It tells you he's got two different names. That's all. That's when you know you're a football player. <laughs> when you get that nickname. We're going to go to a break. First break of the first quarter. First break of our evening tonight. 4.53 to play. First quarter. Tied 0-0 here on Friday night. Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Opening seven minutes here at Bishop England High School. We are on Daniel Island. Week number four, Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Defensive battle here early. And can we just appreciate what a beautiful night for football it's been? Sunset has been gorgeous. We're not getting rained on in the booth this week. (laughs) 
Yeah, for, for those of you that didn't watch last week, there was about six inches of rain on the sidelines throughout our production crew uh, battling the elements. We had rain coming in on us in the press box at times with doors and hatches being open. It was a wild night. Really good punt here. Line drive kick going to be fielded back inside the five. Flag comes in immediately. This one's coming back. Nice return by Clarence Simmons, but it's going to be all for none. Come back inside the five-yard line. Right at a 50-yard punt for Kevin Craig. It's a booming punt, but like I said, looks like it's going to be a block in the back, which is going to pin the Wolverines pretty deep in their own territory early on in this game. Here's our Friday night keys to the game. Woodland's keys to the game. Play book in football. They have two massive offensive tackles in James Mosley and Cam Pringle. And they really just have to rely on them to peer, uh, to pave the way for Harrison. And on the other side for Bishop England. Yeah, Bishop England. I mean, we came into this game thinking that they would have thinking that they would have a two quarterback system and and get into it with with uh, Kuhas and with with also Pampu, but like we like we talked about a little bit earlier, unfortunately, Pampu is not going to be getting much action in this game. So, although we said it's a two quarterback system, it's all going to be on Kuhas tonight, and it is a big deal. He has to really step up. He's had a 64% pass uh, pass completion percentage this year, and he's going to need to do well for this uh, Bishop team that is going to need all the help they can get on offense against this stout. Wolverines defense. We'll talk a little bit more about the Bishop England offense as the night goes on. Backed up here to start this drive inside the three-yard line are the Wolverines. Sidarian Harrison. Great story earlier today from Eddie Ford on uh, Harrison. Really one of the key plays of their season so far. Here's just straight snap and is going to follow uh, that big left tackle and Cam Pringle out to about the five-yard line. Cam Pringle, uh, we said he's a big-time recruit. He's got offers from every SEC and ACC team except the one that plays in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He's named his top ten. Among those top ten, Clemson, Georgia, Ohio State, LSU, Tennessee. Right now, the top junior offensive tackle prospect in the country. He's big number 77 on the left side, and he's the size of about three normal human beings. He <laughs> cannot miss him walking out on that offensive line, and... Uh, he's getting recruited for a good reason. He really anchors this offensive line for the Wolverines, and he's going to need this help right now. Simmons feels his way over the right side, and he's going to get out near first down yardage, and I believe he got it. It's another Mr. Sparky first down here in the first quarter for the Wolverines, and they move out of the shadow of their own goalpost. Not only do you have Cam Pringle on the left side, but then you have James Mosley on the right side, another big guy, and he we could be seeing him playing on Saturdays real soon as well. Eddie Ford, just he just raves about these two offensive tackles. He loves this football team. He is in his uh, fourth season as the head coach at Woodland, 23-11 and 11 overall. Said he had the best offseason he's ever had in his six years and four years as a head coach at Woodland. A little miscommunication, maybe just a bobbled snap. He did. He dropped it. And Simmons will pick his way for a couple of yards. This is a banged-up Woodland team. Jalen England, their starting running back, is out. He's kind of an all-world athlete back there. And Dramonte Kelly, their number two running back, is out. So Clarence Simmons is really the third-string running back. He's trying to step up tonight. And then Jaden Gardner, a wide receiver, will slide back there and play some running back. Well, it also helps when you have some day a Sedarian Harrison at quarterback. You've seen him already take some keepers today, so he's going to be a big part of that running offense as well. Uh, and both teams a little bit banged up, and it's they're still fair and well against each other here early in this first quarter. That's a good look at John Canty a minute ago. He and his father Jack have just shy of 300 wins combined here at Bishop England. Harrison takes it, a little hesitation, and you can tell right now Woodland doesn't want to make a mistake deep in their own territory. They're just trying to pick some room in there, tackle to tackle, see if they can't pop a big one and give themselves some space to operate. Yeah, and when you have a mobile quarterback like Sedarian Harrison, 
You can be a little conservative. Just want to quickly use those big boys on the offensive line, those big offensive tackles, go, go left to right, and just try to pick up some more yards until they get a little more breathing room for Harrison. Final two minutes of the first quarter. Scoreless defensive struggle early on and offsides. I believe Bishop England jumped, and they may have cost themselves a third down opportunity. They did. They'll step off five, and it should be. Is it enough for a first down? Looks like it is. Yeah, David Herring says yes, and so it'll be a first down. Big break for the Wolverines there. Getting out, getting a little bit more breathing room out of their, up to the own 25 now. And now you might see, get to see the Wolverine offense uh, in full swing with a little bit more breathing room from Harrison's back to the end zone. Receiver to either side of the field. Harrison, a little RPO. He'll keep it. Spins, makes one man miss, and now two, flips it forward, and I think he was across the line of scrimmage when he threw that. They'll give Woodland Ford progress all the way out to the 45-yard line. We'll say it stands. So a 20-yard gain. Interesting. It looks Here's like, the replay. Looks like he's a good yard or two in front of the yeah, first that's, down Yeah, that's just a miss. He flipped it forward, and uh, I think the official's discussing it right now. Or maybe we missed the flag. They marked it, and now they're going back to look at where the flag is. But it's just like we were talking about earlier, Zeke. Harrison is really the one to to run the ball today and has a lot of RPO opportunities, which is going to be a big driver for this offense. Yeah, one more look at it. I'm not sure if anyone threw the flag, but Harrison there, the line of scrimmage was right about the 25-yard line. He spins. He flips it from about the 23 to the 30. Yeah, he's... Wow, they're gonna they're gonna keep it. They're gonna keep it ball at the 45. So Woodland catches a break. It'll be first and ten for the Wolverines out at the 40 yard line. A timeout asked for by Bishop England. Minute ten to play first quarter. Week number four of Friday night rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Here's our fan cam, sponsored by Fan Zone. Fan Zone, all your sports teams' gear under one roof. There's almost nobody here at like 728. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how that happens. Full. It's crazy how that happens. They just come. I wonder if they all they all carpool or whatnot. But the same thing last week. They, you feel like, oh, I feel like it might be a little bit of a quiet game, and then you look over and there's 200 students cheering on their home team. Fan cam sponsored by Fan Zone. Yeah, That's really a, good student section for BE. Got some, Everybody's made their way out on Friday Night Rivals. They had some retro jerseys in there. I saw old John Stockton. I saw a Heinz Ward. Maybe it was a little bit of a theme tonight. A little bit of everything coming up later in the game for you. At halftime, we'll have the Delta Force All-Stars cheer of the game. We'll show you cheers from both teams, both cheer squads. And you'll be able to go and vote at abcnews4.com for... Your favorite cheer, and later on in the broadcast, we'll show you the Delta Force All-Stars cheer of the game, sponsored by Delta Force Athletics. I think John Canty just wanted a timeout to have a little discussion with this officiating crew. Didn't look like he was too happy with that last call. Woodland has moved out of the shadow of their own goal line. They've got picked up about 45, uh, 44, 43 yards so far on this drive. It started at the two. Simmons ahead for three. Dragging him down from behind was Charlie Brannigan. Marcus Malden, Bo Hewlin, Charlie Brannigan, Fletcher, Ethington, Carl along that front line. Yeah, I feel for uh, those those DNs, they got a they got a big task. Marcus Malden is uh <laughs> Got a big task of taking on Cam Pringle on that on that left side, but 
They've been doing a decent decent job so far and have really got to the run running back there. Might be the final play of the first quarter. Harrison, option keeper, tucked it inside, found space. Harrison breaks free. Harrison inside the 20. Does he have the angle? Yes. Touchdown, Woodland. Harrison takes it 55 yards, and we have our first score of the night. What a play by Harrison. And you talk about next level speed. Uh, Harrison, as you look at this replay uh, presented by Shoe, uh, Crew Chevrolet, he takes it and he just waits, buys his time, lets his offensive line make those blocks, and then once he hits that hole, n- some nice juke moves, and then he just turns on the Jets and gets in that end zone. Really a stiff arm at the end, too. Made sure he could sh- shrug off the defenders. And when you talk about a quarterback who can run and pass and at that speed, he's really good for this Wolverine offense. Jack Leahy able to run him down. They'll go for it on two. A little toss to, I believe, it was Simmons, and Simmons just plows in for the two-point conversion. Just that little halfback spot, just got the toss and just plowed forward for the two-pointer. So Woodland strikes first, a 98-yard touchdown drive capped by a 55-yard touchdown run by Sedarian Harrison. That's a Trident Technical College touchdown. Your future, your college, Trident Technical College. Actually flipped it. It wasn't Simmons on the two-point conversion. It was Jaden Garner who got the catch or who got the toss. And so he converts for Woodland. Harrison, I mean, that was just a great run. And you, you talked about it, too. These running backs for this Wolverine team are pretty banged up. And when you can have Harrison sprint down the field on a 55-yard game or 55-yard game for a touchdown and the elusiveness he has was really the difference in that score there. And it, if you're Bishop England, you've got to make sure you're playing contained defense. Let him beat you up the middle. Don't let him get outside and get into space because that's where Harrison's dangerous. Harrison's the quarterback. He's also the holder, the punter, and the kickoff man. It's a pooch up the far sidelines. Fair catch asked for, and B.E. will go on offense there. So just when we thought we were going to have a scoreless first quarter, Harrison rips off a 55-yard touchdown run. And Garner on the conversion. It's first down and 10. Let's go down to Bob on the sidelines. Hey, guys, I'm down here with uh, Principal Finneran. We're going to present a check to him here in just a second. And, uh, so, But I want to tell you, you're a couple weeks into the school year. Excited. What are some of the exciting things you're doing here at Bishop England? Well, that's a big day for us. We celebrated John England Day today. It's our namesake for our school. So the kids got uh, free donuts, free lunch, and played some games and bouncy houses and that kind of stuff. Our kids are back in the swing of things. You know, school starts and, and academics begin. Um, we have great um, sports teams this year. I'm very proud of all our teams this year. It's just nice to see the kids back in the stands. Especially in the stands over here. There we've got a packed student section. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the school year. And a little bit of communication issue there with uh, Bob's mic. My TV Charleston and ABC News 4 are proud to present each participating home school a check for $500. This grant provides each school with extra funding to help make their school great. Over the past 12 seasons, Friday Night Rivals and our sponsors have donated over 130000 to low country students and schools. Congratulations from My TV Charleston and ABC News 4. 12 minutes in the books here on Daniel Island. Woodland leads Bishop England 8 to nothing. Week number four of Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. One quarter into the books here on Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Bishop England looking for their first sustained drive of the night. Trying to answer the Woodland touchdown run by Harrison. They'll take a shot up this near sideline, knocked away at the last moment. By Clarence Simmons, nice job running there at the corner, by the back, uh, by the running back. And guys just play both ways so much during a high school game. And Clarence Simmons, who's had a number of carries already tonight, out there having to run. He's dangerous on both sides of the field. And this was a great play by Simmons. He was able to 
really get his hand in between. It was a great run by Miller, who's a first year really big player for this Bishop England offense. And but uh, Simmons, great defensive play, eyes on the ball as he's running back downfield, gets his hand in between Miller's gloves and was able to make a big stop there. So third down and four. Bishop England sitting just inside their own 40-yard line. Nice cut back, but stopped short. It is Dixon Hardy, and that will bring up fourth down. I do want to say it's uh, it's kind of funny. Now that they're at the 40-yard line, I have to say this. But today is – I'll get to it in a minute. I'll tell you in a second. But uh, I've, got to, I've got to tell – i got to – Wish a happy 40th at some point on here. Oh, there we I'm go. Missing, I'm missing out this weekend for Friday Night Rivals <laughs> and work, of course. But, uh, of course, of course. A little sneak peek. So Gavin Craig will come on to punt. Nobody deep for Woodland right now, just playing a safety defense, their traditional defense. It's just fourth and one at the 41-yard line. Also want to say it was a great stop by Woodland from Chance Green, who really wrapped it up and made sure they didn't get past that first down marker. Nice kick by Craig. It'll bounce inside the 20, inside the 10, and roll dead at the 6. Officially 49 yards. What a punt. The young man needs to be playing some college football. Yeah, he's had great kicks all night. I think Woodland hasn't started, besides the touchback on the opening kick, they haven't started past their 10-yard line in the past couple drives, occasionally. So Woodland first and 10. They had a 97-yard drive, 98-yard drive unofficially minutes ago, and now they're backed up again right at the, we'll call it the 6-yard line. When you have a kicker that helps you out like that, it really can make the difference in a football game. (laughs) Who says kickers aren't athletes? That's right. Week four of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet here on my TV, Charleston. Zeke Beam, Sean Mahoney, Trooper Bob coming to you from Bishop England High School on Daniel Island. Just an absolutely sterling night for football. Harrison had it go through his hands, picks it up, rolls out, nearly threw a pick six. Oh, Needed to throw that one 70 rows up, and he almost threw it for a Bishop England touchdown as undercutting it and nearly coming up with it was Jack Huey. Almost from, you. it was a scary play on all ends. It goes through Harrison Fingers, and you're like, oh, don't get a safety. And then he throws it, and then he's like, oh, don't get a pick six. Almost from bad to worse for the Wolverines. Very lucky to be getting out of that one. Second quarter replay brought to you by Palmetto Pride. Palmetto Pride. Litter trashes everyone. And so Woodland back up, second and ten at their own six-yard line. Harrison makes one miss, bounces it outside, dances to the boundary, and picks up six or seven. So it brings up third down and manageable. You can tell it's really going to be interesting. Is Harrison at the end of this game more tired, or (laughs) is Bishop England the tired side? Because a lot of this right now is Sideri and Harrison in backyard football. He's got the touchdown run. And he is the difference maker in this football game right now. And, of course, it helps to have Cam Pringle, the All-American left tackle, over there to run behind. (laughs) He is shifty, though. We'll say that. Third down four. Comes to Gardner. Finds the seam, and I think he has a first down. Needed four, picked up, I think, seven. And that'll move the sticks. That's our first West Shore Homes first down of the night. West Shore Homes, America's most admired home remodeling brand. You had both the, both, pretty much the whole offensive line outside of Pringle pull to the right side to give the running back some room there uh, to make sure they get the first down. And when you got those big boys on that front line running at you, one of the best offensive lines in the state, uh, it's, <laughs> you better be ready to take some hits. So that offensive line going to work right now against Bishop England. Pringle pulling this way. A little running room out to the boundary 
for Marcus Jackson, I believe. Check that that's for A. Levante for A. Just a freshman getting touches. Big reason he's getting touches is Jalen England and Dramonte Kelly are both out. Both these teams, you talk to these coaches, very banged up. Mm -hmm. Very banged up. A lot of uh, two, three, four-week injuries that are lingering right now. Still early in the year, and region play is still down the road. So in a non-region game, some guys are just being held out. Yeah. A little inside toss and a couple of yards. I can't tell if that's Tyrell Sam, and I believe it is. Tyrell Sampson, I beg your pardon, the junior. His first touch of the night. Woodland really trying to spread around the football. Yeah, we saw a lot of QB keeps with uh, Harrison. Obviously, the touchdown was one of the, the best plays of the night. But, yeah, give Harrison a little bit of the break, spread the love a little bit. And when you have a whole offensive line like that, shoot, Zeke, maybe you can run behind these big boys. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Harrison's changing the play. First and ten. Foray again, and Foray just picks his way for almost five yards. Really good pursuit from B. That ball might have come out. Be interesting to see that one again. Dixon Hardy came up with it. This would be a good angle. And yeah, pretty good call there. Looked like his knee was on the ground before that ball got ripped out at the very end. Gain of about four. Good job of Hardy to arrive with a couple of tacklers hanging on and try to rip at that football. Quickly moving second quarter inside. A little running room for Simmons and a flag comes in. This one might be coming back 10 yards. Might have been right where you would expect holding to be called. Yeah. But Simmons literally in this entire play was... Just running right behind Pringle. He said, let me get the All-American just to give you all that blocking room. But looks like someone on that offensive line we were talking about might have had a slight hold on that play. Marcus Malden, the senior in there on that stop. It will be a holding penalty to back up the Wolverines 10 yards. Really run-heavy attack from... Honestly, both sides of the football for the Bishops and the Wolverines today. Uh, and it all starts with Sedarian Harrison for the Wolver uh, for the Wolverines. But now we're starting to see any uh, a lot of different looks, a lot of pulls by those guards and tackles and really running downhill in between those hash marks. Under eight to play here in the second quarter. Harrison, nice patience, and runs out of time as he tries to bounce it outside, gets back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about it. Nice job getting off the block and dragging Harrison down in the open field by Zach Hanel. We haven't said his name tonight. Cole Predish, Jack Bowen, Zach Hanel, the linebackers, Luke Decker, Jack Huey, the corners, Charlie Ranney, and Dixon Hardy, the safeties for this Bishop's defense. Third down and long. Third down and about 15. There's Hanel. 5'9", 160 is what, he li what he's listed at. I think he's a little bigger than that. Looks looks like he's got a little, a couple extra pounds you on You know, these guys get on the roster as freshmen, and then you're growing <laughs> in high school, and you get in the weight room, and next thing you know, you're, you know, you're six foot and 200 pounds, and... Or in the case of Cam Pringle, you're six <laughs> eight and 300 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> They don't all grow like that. In fact, <laughs> there's a reason he's one of the top prospects in America in the junior class. Yeah. Really long time taken by Harrison. Going to take a shot upfield. Has a receiver off his hands and intercepted. Furry let it bounce off his shoulder pads. And I think Randy came up to get it. It is. Charlie Ranney, just as we were bragging on him, has his first interception of the season. And Bishop England in business 
at the Woodland 40-yard line. What a heads-up play by by Ran, by Ranny, and it was a great ball by uh, Harrison, but unfortunately, unfortunately, Levante Ferre couldn't come down with it, and Hanny was able to make a big play for the Bishops. There's a great tackle there. Uh, looks like some extracurriculars after the play. Yeah, late flag after that one as trying to work through some audio difficulties here in the booth and down on the field with Trooper Bob. Try to get those squared away for you here in just a moment. But I think a flag after the play. Lee Bannister came flying in there, but a little bit hard to tell what exactly the flag was on. Maybe some extracurriculars after the play. And they're going to call it on sportsmanlike. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. It's going to go against Woodland. And so a couple of self-inflicted errors right now for the Wolverines. The drop pass. And then the personal foul penalty in Bishop England in business at the Wolverine 25-yard line. If you're David Kuhas, you got to be thinking, get this ball in the end zone. This could be, this is huge. They are hanging tough with the Woodland team who has been killing teams in the first half. Like you said, averaging 50 points a game. You can hang tough with them, especially for Kuhas. It would give him a lot of confidence now that we, we don't, we're expecting to have Pompu in. You don't have him and you have a banged up offense. But if you can, you can get this, this, uh, offense going early, especially on plays that you kind of they're kind of gifting you, you got to take advantage. BE without their starting running back Weston Peterson. They hope he's going to be back next week for Philip Simmons. But Peterson, 13 carries and 182 yards on the season. He had a, almost all of those 182 yards against Porter Gout in the opener, but got hurt and he's missed the last three games. And they think he's going to be back just in time for region play. B.E. at first and 10 at the Woodland 25-yard line and immediately just snowed under his Kuhas. That was a busted play. It looked like maybe a back went the wrong direction. And this one get a little physical and a little chippy after the fact. But it'll be second down and long for the Bishops. Midway point of the second quarter. It looks like that was Mason Schuler. We have him listed as... 74 on here, but it's 75 on the field. Uh, regardless, that's it's a big body coming up on uh, through that A gap, and he really made his presence felt on that play. I think that's Deshaun, Delshawn Ravenel. Oh, is that Ravenel? I believe so. Looks like looks like it fits. I think that number right there fits. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Second down, 13. Straight drop. Receiver was open and just rushed a little bit by Kuhas as he had a blitzer in his face. Running free right at him without anyone in front of him was Gannon Kepler. Let's go down to Bob on the sidelines now that we have him back. Bob, how's it going down there? It's going good. Everyone's still excited. Matter of fact, these guys are hitting real hard down here. One of the hits, I was thinking to myself, he hit my car that hard. The airbag would have came out. <laughs> Everyone, I'm telling you, man, everyone's so excited. And I just as you saw, I spoke to the principal. He's he's very thankful. There's just as many students here as parents, and that's good to see during the football game. You know, on a Friday night. But I do want to give a shout out to the cheerleaders. I spoke to their coach earlier. They practiced all week, and you know, they, obviously they got everyone in the game, so they're doing a good job. Are you are you happy you don't have to have uh, your waiters on this weekend or this week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I'm 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 very thankful and grateful. <laughs> the shower must have felt good after the game. <laughs> Those who don't know, we uh, we were at Phillips Simmons a week ago, and Bob stood in the sidelines in about four inches of water for three hours. I, I can tell you, I'm, I was in the Navy, and we were wet last week. <laughs> that's how you know. That's how you know. When Trooper Bob says it's, it's wet, it is a wet one out there. <laughs> Bishop England will try the field goal attempt. Far left hash. Officially a 40-yard attempt. Craig, plenty of leg. Nailed it. Craig good from 40. 
And B.E. is on the scoreboard. 4.23 to play in the second quarter. Bishops capitalize on the turnover. They've cut the lead to five. Week four, Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Bishop England on the board on a 40-yard field goal from Kevin Craig. They answer the Harrison touchdown with a score of their own, and we have a five-point game here in the final four and a half minutes of the first half. Friday night rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet, Zeke Beam, Sean Mahoney, Trooper Bob patrolling the sidelines. This one's going to be returned for the first time tonight. A little bit of a seam for for Ray. He gets away from one tackler and pops it for another 10 yards. Then he's knocked down at the 35-yard line. Good job by Bishop England just staying aggressive in pursuit there. Ferre just pinballed a little bit of everywhere. There's our fan cam font sponsored by Fan Zone. That is a tightly packed, <laughs> that is a tightly packed uh, student section here at Bishop England. He's got a sweatshirt on. I want to know what's going what on. What is there. going on with that? I mean, I am, we're in the booth up here and I'm sweating a little bit. You got the fan next to you. Lucky, you got the the, the fan blowing. Uh, keep it you warm. Uh, is it just a fashion thing, or is or is he actually is he cold? Or <laughs> I have no idea. Here's Harrison <laughs> finds Gardner in the slot. That'll go for almost first down yardage gain of seven or eight. Just kind of a long handoff into the slot there. Nice job attacking upfield by Bo Hewlin. Woodland picking up what they left off with the run game. Now we got Harrison back in shotgun. See if they might go pass here, but a little bit nervous. Uh, you got to wonder how his mindset is after they're throwing that pick. One back with Harrison, two receivers either side, and a little inside give and some running room for Simmons. He picks up a West Shore Holmes first down. And Woodland out near midfield. Second quarter first down sponsored by West Shore Homes, America's most admired home remodeling brand. Ball right at midfield. There's our Palmetto Pride replay. Got to take care of our sponsors. Remember, there Sean? Go. There you go. <laughs> Little RPO. Harrison this way. Got it. Out wide with running room for Niels, and Niels takes off down the sideline. Where'd he step out? They mark him out back at the 16-yard line. I, it was almost too <laughs> casual to be a touchdown, so I kind of got confused, and you knew he stepped out. It was just a matter of where. Look at that speed there by uh, by Kelly Niels, uh, really showing uh, t- really showing the the second gear for him. And, and like you said, it looked casual. Look, it was a a, where it looked like it was just going to be a nice 10, 15 yard gain, and he's running down the sideline. And now they got a good first down presented by West Shore Homes, America's most admired home remodeling brand. Didn't really need to go out of bounds, wasn't being forced, and he just kind of took him took himself out of bounds. And a quick timeout asked for by Bishop England. But Woodland knocking on the door, and the way their defense has controlled this football game in ways. This would be a big second score for the Wolverines. 301 to play first half. Woodland on the move. Let's go down to Trooper Bob on the sidelines. Hey, something you can't see down here. They've got kids behind the stadium playing football. They got the slushy truck over here, the drone in the air. And if I had a signal, I would do my next hit right into the middle of that student section. Because I'm telling you, they got this stadium rocking. <laughs> It's a good atmosphere when you got that that those those stands rocket trooper Bob. Or you gonna jump in? You should jump in there with them at halftime. I would. You know, they had a chair that I believe. I believe. I believe we win. I was like, man, I wish I was in the middle of section because <laughs> I was getting goosebumps standing over here. But if I had a signal, I would definitely be there on my next hit. Bob is uh, cemented in concrete at the fifty yard line for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Special thanks to our production team. We're we're working out of Houston and here at the stadium and uh, working over internet for the most part. It's a challenge sometimes, and our crew really working hard all day in the heat to try and make it work here. And excited to have Friday Night Rivals on the air tonight. 
Woodland on the move. Final minutes of the first half. Sedarian Harrison has been everything that's been advertised. A little flare out wide, and a flag comes flying in, and Gardner nowhere to go. B.E. sniffed that one out pretty well. It's a great stop on defense for for the Bishops as, uh, as yeah, like you said, Gardner was trying to do a little little screen out on the right. And uh, Harrison, he's been making, making it happen in the air and making it happen on the ground, but Bishop England's defense comes up big there on first down, and they're going to need a couple more stops too. You're really going to want to keep uh, this Wolverine team out of the end zone, especially with so much, so little time left to go in this half. So to be first and long, first and almost 20 from the 20-yard line. And this is where Harrison's dangerous. Woodland's been very conservative with him backed up toward his own end zone, but now he has space behind him, and you know they can take the snap, and he can play a little bit of backyard football and try to make something happen. Mm-hmm. He's had a couple of moments in this game where he's had a lot of time to throw behind Pringle, Mosley, Green, Kepler, Wernicke. He's got moves. He's shifty. Instead, they'll run it with Simmons, try to get a chunk back, and they do. He'll pick up about eight right up the gut, and it'll set up, set up second down about 12 from right at the 17-yard line. B.E. player late to come off, Harrison. With Simmons. Keeps it himself. Cuts inside. He gets another three or four. And it brings up third manageable. So they've erased the penalty and two or three more. Brings up third and seven probably in four down territory. Harrison just makes you question so many things. Is he going to pass? Is he going to hand it off? Is he going to run? So dangerous with the football in his hands. And Bishop England, I believe, jumps. May have helped him out. Either Brannigan or Ethington Carl in the middle of that line. A little eager. Yeah, looks like it was Ethington Carl who jumped a little bit. And as soon as he jumped, put the hands on his head and said, oh, he knew that was a mistake. Back it up five yards. They'll say it's on Woodland. Oh, wow. So either somebody moved or maybe a snap infraction. So... That wipes out the last run, third and 13. Just under 100 seconds to play first half. Clock runs. Now, if you're on that Bishop England, Bishop defense, defense you're thinking keep a, keep an eye, maybe keep a linebacker, uh, linebacker like we talked about our our uh, player of the game, our player of the game earlier, uh, Cole Predish. Keep your eyes on Harrison. You do not want him rolling out on you, and you do not want him. You make someone else beat you. Pressure comes. Harrison dumps it underneath, got kneels, but I don't think he picked up the first down. It'll be fourth and about four as he's tackled at the 10-yard line. Nice job of hanging on in the open field by Marcus Malden. And Woodland will use a timeout. So final minute of the first half, Sedarian Harrison has a 55, give or take, yard touchdown run to his credit late in the first quarter. The Bishops have a 40-yard field goal from Kevin Craig. Those are our two scores here tonight in the defensive battle at Bishop England High School. Next week, week five of Friday Night Rivals, we will be in Hanahan. For Porter Gowd at Hanahan next Friday night. Some good ones ahead on the schedule. Stratford at Somerville, Berkeley at Wando, Kane Bay at Goose Creek. Starting to sneak into some of those 5A teams in the area, some of the big boys. Some of those big rivalries, too, especially up in that Berkeley County area. And don't sleep on Wando this year. Wando's been doing uh, uh, doing, doing pretty good, especially for teams here in the Mount Pleasant area. You know, they beat a big rivalry game. Uh beat some good competition this year so we got a good schedule coming up right here friday night rivals on my tv driven by crew chevrolet keep playing the football game final minute of the first half fourth down and four from the 10 yard line for woodland 
Harrison rolling right. Harrison pressure coming. Harrison threw it away at the last second, but nothing doing, and B.E. gets the stop. So, Up field to ride him down, I believe, was Hanel. And Bishop England will get the football back. A look at your Palmetto Pride replay. Yeah, and and that was the, the – we've talked about Hanel. Hanel's made some big plays on defense all night. And it was, like I said, make someone else beat you. Do not let Harrison beat you with his legs. And big tackle by Hanel. He's been a big, a big key for this uh, – Bishop England defense tonight. Final minute. Can't imagine Bishop England's going to try to do too much here. Down just five points, still in a one-score game. New quarterback in. little option out left. Well, we didn't think we'd see Pampu, but today we have. Marco Pampu in there and running the option. And maybe just some confusion on our end on some numbers, but Pampu gets his first snaps of the football game. And it's a first down run, a West Shore Holmes first down run for Bishop England, so a different wrinkle there. Yeah, it's good to see Pampu out there. Like like we said, we didn't know if he it sounded like when we last talked to the coach he wasn't going to get any snaps, but, you know, minute left to go in the second half, just get his feet warm possibly for a conference play. Gave the dive there and immediately upfield to make the stop, I believe. Might have been Junior Ford. Could have also been Marcus Jackson, I think, for Woodland. And that will be the final play of the first half. Good one here on Friday Night Rivals. Defensive battle. One explosive play on offense for Woodland and a big defensive turnover for Bishop England. Leads to points for the Bishops. defensive battle so far and great start by woodland but bishop england has kept themselves within range and uh it's gonna be a fun second half for both these teams trying to catch up with john canty down on the sidelines halfway home and a five-point game here on week number four of friday night rivals So Darian Harrison has been the playmaker on offense for Woodland. And on the other side for Bishop England, it's been the defense kind of by committee, just absolutely rock solid. Thought we might have John Canty here. We're actually Looks like we're going to get the leading coach first. We're going to go over to Eddie Ford. He's making his way across the sideline. And we'll go downstairs with Trooper Bob, who's with Coach Ford. Hey, Coach, you got eight points on the board. You're in the lead by five. What's your take on the first half? Uh, it's been a very physical contest. But we're doing a lot of things that are kind of killing ourselves with the penalties and just a lot of things that we don't normally characteristically do. But we just got to clean that up in the second half. Thank you very much. Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Take care. Halftime, 8-3 to three over Bishop England. Defensive battle here. At BE on Daniel Island. Week number four of Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. We had to break. 24 minutes in the book. Books. Palmetto Pride. Halftime report coming up. Time for the Palmetto Pride halftime report here at Bishop England High School where... Woodland leads B.E. through 24 minutes, 8-3. to three. Dance and cheer squads getting ready to perform on the field here at halftime. And now time for our scholar athletes. First scholar athlete for Woodland, Jace Reeves, a 5.15 GPA, the baseball standout, an all-region performer in baseball. Community service includes Cleaning the graves of soldiers, and he is also a youth sports counselor. He is your Scholar Athlete of the Week from Woodland. And for Bishop England, Chase Miller. Miller, a 5.0 GPA, standout on the baseball team and a football starter. Four years of volunteer, volunteering at camps 
and doing community service at the Low Country Food Bank and the Miracle League in and around Charleston. Those are your scholar athletes brought to you by David Ayler Law Offices. All right, we're going to go down to Bob on the sidelines, waiting for the cheerleaders to perform here at halftime. Bob, I think they're having some of the same technical difficulties we are. You know, I want to tell you that I got schooled a couple minutes ago. So they have cheerleaders, and then they have their dance team also. And they're getting ready to perform. They're, they're waiting. Needs a plug for the iPhone. <laughs> they, said, <laughs> they said they don't have a plug for the iPhone to have the music. But technical difficulties all the way around, but it, they'll, hopefully they'll get it and they could uh, show their performance. You know, they work out really hard. I talked to the coach earlier, and... Um, you know, they do such a great job, and I'd like to get them on air if we can. And we also need a fan cam. I keep talking about a Susan section, student section. I don't know if we got them on the air or not yet, but the only room there is on their shoulders because it's packed. Oh, yeah, Bob. There were some guys wearing a sweatshirt in there, too. I don't know if that's the smartest decision. But. Oh, no. I'll, I'll break mine out, but not yet. Just, you know. Eight to three, Woodland leads at halftime over Bishop England. We'll be back with some first-half highlights. Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. We'll be right back with more from the Palmetto Pride Halftime Report. Halftime, Woodland leads Bishop England 8-3 here at Bishop England High School on Daniel Island. Our time and temperature sponsored by Holy City Heating and Air, 847 p.m., 76 degrees. It is much, much cooler this week in the low country than it has been in past weeks. Beautiful. We've needed it. <laughs> hey, fans, we're giving you an opportunity to vote for tonight's Delta Force All-Stars Cheer of the Game. Log on to abcnews4.com poll and vote for either of tonight's cheer squads, either from Woodland or from Bishop England. Both available to vote for at abcnews4.com forward slash poll. Cast a vote for the Delta Force All-Stars cheer of the game. Here are your cheers for tonight. Fans, feel free to vote again. Cast a vote for Delta Force All-Stars Cheer of the Night. Results later on in the game. 8-3, to three, Woodland leads Bishop England at halftime. Halftime highlights on the other side of this break. Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Coach, you're only down by five. A lot of football game left. What, what would you like to see from your team in the second half? Well, we, we got to maintain drives. Um, we, we moved the ball some, but we just put it, didn't put it in the end zone. So maintain drives, get points, run the clock, and just keep on scoring. 
Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. Halftime here at Bishop England on Daniel Island. 8-3, to three, Woodland leads a 55-yard touchdown run by Sedarian Harrison. The difference right now in the football game. First half highlights as the Bishop England dance team performs down below. First half highlights. And then here's the run by Harrison. This was uh, just really a spectacular all-athletic ability and talent. Uh, Harrison, put it on that second gear. Get out of the way. And even send that tackle at the end, too. Make sure it gets in the end zone. Uh, definitely the difference maker in this game. And, and when you got a quarterback that can run like that, you're going to be doing pretty well. All natural ability from Harrison there. The interception by Randy sets up the field goal as Furry, the freshman. That's a freshman mistake right there, and yeah. B.E. makes him pay. Yeah, and we've been talking about the kicker all night has been a weapon for uh, kicker and puncher has been a weapon for Bishop England, but we talked about how good Harrison is. The biggest mistake he makes, and you're going to live and die by Harrison if you're uh, Woodland Wolverines. And he's going to have to clean it up a little bit to, in the second half, but the offense 100% running through him. The William Poole field goal from 40 yards, the only score in the first half from Bishop England. Battling Bishops coming out of the locker room, getting set for second half action. Entertaining first 24 minutes, kind of what we expected. Good defense on both sides. And really, I think it's going to be either a mistake on one side or the other or, or what offense can get it going. We saw... A little change of pace from Bishop England there late in the first half with Marco Pampu sliding on there and running some options. So there's some different options there for John Canty here in the second half to try and get this offense going. Yeah, I mean, if we could see if if that was a sneak peek of possibly Pampu coming in and, and getting some reps in the second half, it could be a nice spark for Bishop England or that might, or that might just be a little rep at the end of the first half. But I think the biggest thing was what you heard from, you heard from the head coach of of Woodland, Eddie Ford at the end of that first half. They had a lot of penalties that kind of killed some of their drives, some sloppy play uh, overall by Woodland. Woodland's not used to having these close games. They've been killing teams so far uh, in these first couple of games, scoring on average 50, only eight this first half. So it's a testament to Bishop England's defense, but you got to wonder how long they can hold that up. Later on tonight, a reminder to join ABC News, News 4 for Scotty Eisberg and Natalie Spala on Friday Night Rivals. Tonight at 11.05, they'll have scores and highlights from throughout the low country. Full night of football all around the area. I know last week, right up until effectively kickoff, every game in the low country was in question. <laughs> there was lightning everywhere, driving rains tonight. Not going to be an issue. Everyone played. Scotty Eisberg, Natalie Spala later tonight on Friday Night Rivals. Scores and highlights from throughout the low country. You probably couldn't ask for a better night for football. No, this is just absolutely perfect September weather. Absolutely no complaints. BE getting warmed up. Woodland getting warmed up. Just a couple of minutes from the start of the second half. Talked early about our schedule, upcoming schedule here on Friday Night Rivals. And again, next week we'll be just up the road. I mean, we're, as the crow flies, three miles from Hanahan High School. We'll go up 526, and Friday Night Rivals will be on site at Hanahan as the Hawks host Porter Gowd, September 30th, last day of September, Stratford at Somerville, October 7th, Berkeley at Wando. Still see two of the top teams in the low country, Fort Dorchester and Oceanside on the schedule. Later in October. Not even halfway through our Friday night rival slate yet. This is game number four of ten. And you know once you get closer to November, the end of October, those games just keep getting more and more intense. Let's go down to the sideline and see what Trooper Bob has for us. Hey, you guys are talking about the weather. That's what people are talking about here. I'm going to tell you, it's beautiful out here. If you can dial in the perfect temperature for a football game, this is it. Don't be jealous here in the box. You need to be down here on the stage. <laughs> I want to pan over to the student section while i got the cameraman here. See how packed that thing is? There's still about 100 students and people playing football behind the stadium waiting for the next kickoff for the second half. Hey, look, it's a close game. Nobody's going anywhere. They're only down by five. You heard, Coach. Uh, this is either team's game. 
Jersey night here at Bishop England High School, and it is either team's game, one score game. Really, that turnover late in the first half was huge, I think, for Bishop England for a number of reasons, confidence being one of them. Yeah, definitely. And just knowing that they could stop. I mean, the biggest question was how are they going to handle this offensive line and this running attack from the Wolverines? And uh, minus the Harrison, which who just made a spectacular play at the uh, top of that or the end of that first quarter, they've been doing a pretty good job. And it's all about, like you said, confidence, trying to make sure that they could say, hey, we can hang with these guys. They might be 3 0. We might have the record that doesn't look as good as that, but we can hang with them. Woodland had it to start the game, so Bishop England will have it to start the second half. Only kickoff of the game, Harrison pooched. And I would suspect he'll do it again here to start the second half. Zach Rooney's deep, but I don't think he's going to get it. I think it's going to go to the far side, and Dixon Hardy, the running back there, in case there's an opportunity for a return. Second half of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, underway from Bishop England High School. It is going to be Rooney deep. He hesitated, thought about taking a knee, and now he has some room up the far sideline. Rooney cuts it back at midfield and is down at the 45. And Bishop England, their biggest play of the night, on a short kick. Woodland didn't force him to the boundary. And as we look at this replay presented by Crew Chevrolet, I mean, what a way to start the second half. You, you talk about confidence for these Bishop England battling bishops, and you you really want to make sure that you start off with that with that drive with a nice kickoff return. It looked like he was going to take it to the house for a second, and now it's great field position to start off. Change of quarterback, Marco Pampu is going to get another possession here to start the second half. See if we see a little option, just a little toss sweep and lowering his head and pounding it in there, I think, is Ben Lordy. Nice power run for a couple of yards. Check that. That's Dixon Hardy. They wear three and five, and they're sort of similar builds, so sometimes you get them confused. We're at a very low angle, pretty far, pretty good ways across, uh, off the field, so it can be tough to see a little bit. Dixon Hardy up over 200 yards for the season. Look at this. We got Pampu in the game. Randy at that up back spot. Decker goes in motion. They fake the toss to Decker. Deep shot for Pampu. Inside the 10 and dragging a tackler inside the 5 is Chase Miller, the big-bodied receiver. Might have cramped up or taken a shot in the leg there at the end of it, but Miller, the first-year impact player, comes over from baseball, and he goes up top and makes a big catch to set up Bishop England here early in the third quarter. And you put Pampu in the game. Uh, he got his feet wet at the end of that first drive, and... We didn't expect to see him today, and he's coming in the second half already making big plays, and what a catch by Miller, too, uh, really getting up for that, uh, climbing that ladder, and now you got Bishop Bigland. This could be a chance to take the lead against Woodland, a team who hasn't trailed for much or, or at all this season, so big stakes here. Pampu under center, and a flag comes in immediately. We're going to turn, I think, and give it to Luke Decker. And they'll say offsides on Woodland. So an impressive opening drive to start the third quarter for Bishop England. It started with the big kickoff return from Rooney. And then the shot up top to Chase Miller. Marco Pampu, some of his first action of the season. Couple of snaps in the first half, and can he lead a touchdown drive here to start the third quarter? I formation behind him. Turns, ran into Hardy, and Hardy's trying to power his way for a couple of yards, but nothing doing. Antonio Addison had all 245 pounds wrapped around Hardy as soon as he took the handoff. Yeah, when you got big bodies on that defensive line, this is what they're made for. They're a uh, short distance from the goal, second and short. 
on the goal line. That's why you get those big boys up front to try and stuff the running, make them beat you in the air. But great to see Pampu with some success on his first drive, and hopefully he can. We'll see if he can uh, get this Bishop England team in the lead for the first time this game. Rooney's the back behind him. Decker to his left. Pampu gave it inside and pounding is Rooney and he bounces it outside. Still going. Woodland says he fumbled. And I think he did at the end of the play trying to stretch it out. Oh, Woodland wow. came up with it. The Wolverines get the turnover right at the goal line. Zach Rooney, I think, tried to reach for it and had it knocked out. Just shy. I mean, here's a better look at it. He's trying to do all he can to get there. He's got he's dragging defenders. He wants to reach out. And I think it's when Yeah, the ball's out right before his knee hits the ground. I think it's when Chance Green comes in, lays a big hit, and right when he's going to reach out for it and you just hate to see it for uh for Zach, for Rooney. Definitely kicking himself on that, but it's not out of the, out of the question for Bishop England. They've defense has stepped up, but big play by Chance Green there, and just unfortunately a wasted drive, which was a very good drive, uh, first drive back for Pampu. Uh, but now it's the Bishop England's uh, Bishop's turn to step up on defense. So Woodland with it after the stop at the one might have been the defensive stop of the game, and maybe on. Friday Night Rivals, that might end up being the defensive stop of the season. There you go. <laughs> so Woodland picks up a couple on first down as the carry by Simmons. Yeah, backs against the wall, and those are the stops that will be momentum shifters. You you think about it, if Bishop Ingram was able to get in the end zone there, take the lead, put some pressure on Woodland, it could be a completely different ball game. But still not out for the Bishops. They can get a stop here on defense, which – Led by their linebacking core, which has been flying around the field all day. Woodland spreads it out. They try to run Harrison up the middle. They get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe power his way for a couple. Predish on the bottom of that pile. Who else? In the middle of that defense for Bishop England. Big number 56. Can't bring up a key third down. Your third quarter score bug. Is brought to you by David Ayler Law Offices, your client-focused, community-driven injury firm. Third and two, Woodland, Harrison, the keeper, Harrison, first down and more. Bounces it outside and finally cut down right at the 40-yard line. It's been the tried and true... It's been the tried and true strategy for the Woodland Wolverines. Take your offensive line... Pull him to the left or right side and have Harrison just falling down the field. Getting the first the first first down of the quarter for Willen, sponsored by Mr. Sparky. So the Wolverines, their initial first down of the third quarter. Trying to remain unbeaten on the season. 3-0. and Wins over Bethune-Bowman, Bluffton, and St. John's. Give here and Simmons. Going to kind of... Plod his way for a couple of yards. Takes it across the 40-yard line. I was trying to say earlier, when he crossed the 40, I wanted to say happy 40th birthday to my sister, Meredith, obviously. Uh, she's in Atlanta. But, you know, on a normal birthday, you wouldn't do that. But when your sister turns 40 and you're on TV, you want to say something. So I thought I would do that when I had the opportunity tonight. Oh, well, happy birthday to her. That's awesome. That's awesome. So a gain of a couple. And second and eight for the Wolverines. Too bad you couldn't get it right on the 40 for that. I know, right? <laughs> she hadn't had the ideal 40th birthday. I understand one of the uh, one of the sons got hurt and oh, no. uh, in practice today and is in the ER with a dislocated shoulder this evening. So probably not the ideal 40th birthday weekend for her. <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> not the ideal not the ideal uh, place for you either. But you know, we make it work over here. <laughs> So third down and three. You got to wonder now, Harrison has been killing them on the ground, but 
This offensive line has been great in pass blocking. So do you take a risk here and try to hit one over the top? You see the safeties are down. Uh, they're playing very tight on the line of scrimmage. So let's see if they go for, if they're going to choose for a run, option. Oh, they'll choose the alternate alternative and call timeout. So Woodland will take the timeout here, mid, midway point of the third quarter. Bishop England drove it all the way down to the one, fumbled at the goal line, and now Woodland trying to build a two-score lead. 8-3 our score. Wolverines leading midway point third quarter. Friday night rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Bob, we'll come to you in, in Key third down play here, middle of the third quarter. Woodland trying to cross midfield on their opening possession here in the second half. Harrison, just a straight keep, straight ahead, and might have lost the football. It popped out late. The spot will be really interesting. This is a huge call. Jack Huey came up with it. Just in the mass of humanity on the bottom of everything, the officials will try to sort it out. It's a big spot. It could be inches. Looks like they might have to bring out the chains for this one. They're going to measure, and we'll go down to Bob on the sidelines as we do. Good birthday to your sister there. We're here down here at with Ashley. She's a coach of the cheerleading and dance team. How much preparation goes into a game like this? So we usually practice eight hours each week, but right now we're juggling three home games in a row. So we have about five dances that we're practicing every single day, sometimes on the weekends. And we're super dedicated, and we love the bishops. You do a great job. Do we have time to put a 40th birthday chair together? Let's, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you for your time. You guys do a great job. Keep up the good work. All right, guys. Appreciate that, Bob. They'll save first down on the... Quarterback sneak by Harrison. Ball popped out, but it was very close. And that's another Mr. Sparky first down here for Woodland in the third quarter. And so the Wolverines on the move. Got to tell Bob, Bob, I want to see you on some of those cheers sometime. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think it would be amusing. Maybe that's just me, though. But a uh, big play by uh, Woodland, making sure they can get that first down. Crucial call. And Woodland, they are just winding this clock and taking their time trying to tire out this Bishop England defense. Probably need one more score. Harrison keeps it, spins away from a tackler. But it, it might have taken a little too long, and Huey, a nice job getting upfield making the tackle. Jack Huey may not weigh 160 pounds soaking wet, but he's a good football <laughs> player. Yeah. Jack Huey, I mean, he's all over the field in terms on offense and on defense. He's been one of our our, our biggest, uh, the biggest standouts for the Bishop England defense in today's game. And that's what you love to see, getting to the backfield, making sure they've been getting beat by Harrison on the ground with his feet for a lot of this game. And you need to go and attack him in the backfield, and that's what Huey's been doing. Liam Lowry. Perfectly positioned there to kind of trap Harrison after he took the snap. And so second and 13 for Harrison. Rolling left, has time, flips it forward and, in, and incomplete. Had a little release there for so number one or two. That was Jalen Gardner. Couldn't get it to him. That'll bring up third and long. Well, if you're Bishop England, you're wondering how you put another drive together after hitting a couple of big plays. How do you get that first sustained drive of the night? Mm -hmm. And if you're Woodland, you're thinking eight points probably doesn't win this game. We need another score. Yeah, I mean, Woodland, they've been playing the same sort of strategy this whole game. We're going to run and run and really use this offensive line to our advantage. And they're going to methodically drive the ball down the field. But you're right. Even if they get all the way down there, they need another score if they want to try and really lock this thing up. Still a lot of time left for Bishop England. Harrison on third down. Needs 12. Pressure coming over the middle. Throw behind his intended receiver. Was it intercepted? They say yes. 
Bishop England celebrates. That's number two by Rainey. Charlie Rainey comes up, picks it off the turf. He's got his second pick of the night. Look at that. And B.E. will take over. Yeah, really good camera work there. Randy, nice job to go to the turf to get it. Looks like he just got his hands under that. And uh, better for better for B.E. too because if, if you didn't pick that, the punt could have put you back a little probably closer to your end zone. Now you got a little bit of breathing room. Almost works like a punt. A little bootleg action as we're starting to see a little bit of rotating quarterback. Kuhas that time. Nice throw and catch to his tight end, Connor Lane. That's a Mr. Sparky first down for B.E. And the battling Bishops on the move. I go seeing the interception. Went for 30 yards, which it's for Woodland arm. at times has been a good punt. <laughs> it's an arm punt. That's right. Definitely not something Harrison wants on the stat sheet, though. And so now the change back to Kuhas. Kuhas is a senior baseball guy. Played three years of baseball. Decided in his senior year he wanted to play a little bit of football. Obviously very athletic. Completing over 50% of his passes. Marco Pampu just seeing his first action of the season tonight. And now Kuhas has it. Control of this Bishop England offense in the closing minutes of the third quarter in a one-score game against one of the top teams in 2A. Little give inside goes for a couple to Hardy. I haven't talked about the middle of that line enough. Aaron Pullian, Marcus Jackson, Chance Green, Gannon Kepler. A very active group of linebackers and defensive front. And Pullian's a guy, too, who can line up on that line. He's kind of a Swiss Army nice in that backfield. He's, he can plug those holes up on the defensive line. He can drop back into coverage, and he's been doing, he's been doing pretty well for the Wolverines today. Second and eight, Decker in motion. He gets the toss out wide and just goes back to him, and he gets that four- or five-yard running start and just pounds into the right side of that line for a couple. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a big body over there. If, you wanna, you wanna, if you're going to beat Woodland, you're going to have to be physical. These guys are too big. They're very strong. And if you want to if, if have a chance against Woodland, especially uh, the, their talented people in that, fr- in that front seven, you're going to have to be physical and willing to punch him in the mouth a little bit. And Bishop England, I see a little bit more fire in the second half. They've, they've gotten the opportunities, and this is another big one coming up right here. Third down and five just on the Woodland side of the field. Kuhas, throw and catch. First down to Miller. Miller has two big receptions here in the second half. He had a big, big halftime when he was named Scholar Athlete. He's had a nice little 45 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> he's been he's been the star of the show here on on my TV, Charleston. I mean, first off, the great catch by Miller here, going up, climbing the ladder. He had to climb the ladder on the other one. He has a little bit of uh, some bunnies on him, as we like to call it. But he's been he's having someone like that who can go up and get the ball. They always teach you go to the ball, don't let the ball come to you. And that's exactly what Miller was doing there. And uh, he's been helping this offense move down the field. A replay brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet on Rivers. You've got a friend in the car business. Cruz Chevrolet replay. Decker. Little play action. Rolling this way. Kuhas looking. Flips it over the middle of the field. Threw it way back across his body. And got Chase Miller run over. And lucky to get away with that one. Can't hang the ball over the middle of the field. Kuhas tried to do a little too much there. Yeah, unless your name is Patrick Mahomes or <laughs> or Josh Allen. It's uh, not the best thing to kind of be thrown across your body like that without, without the arm strength. But Kuhas has been making good throws this half. Just got to make sure to be careful with the ball. That's the biggest thing. Bishop England got down to about the two-yard line last drive and fortunately couldn't come away with any points. They would love to see some points on this drive here as we're getting closer to the red zone probably four down territory all the way to the goal line here for the bishops second and ten decker little trap coming back this way and running room breaking into the secondary goes dixon hardy and he's 
Tackled by the last man who could chase him down. Simmons saves a touchdown. Hardy. Gain of 20 as they pop the trap finally. And look at Hardy. As soon as he gets the ball, a little bit of a st- little bit of a confusion on the handoff, and he sees the hole and he attacks it. He's got some speed to him too. Great job by Hardy uh, there in a uh, last line of defense, barely getting to him, but great run by Bishop England. Might have been Ashton Guidi, but I, I'm not sure who said. It might have been 78, but I don't have a 78 on the roster for BE pulling there. <laughs> he kind of just he led. He had the lead block and cleared the way. Yeah, once you get that B gap out where the guard kind of pulls and the tackle pulls, it really creates a thing a car could drive through. A little toss sweep to Decker and Woodland sniff that one out. Looks like it's Samson on the tackle there. Also upfield on the play, Gannon Kepler. Kepler's played a lot on offense and he's played quite a bit of defense too. Talk about some of the biggest players in the games that are in the game today are those people who are playing on both sides of the football. And uh, I mean, you have Harrison on special teams, you have Kepler, you have, uh, we, we've seen Predich a lot. Uh, it's, it's a big, big play all around. Or, or if you can play on both sides, it's special and you can really help your team. And those, those big stars are coming out tonight here on Friday Night Rivals. Kuhas, time, throws to the sideline. Got hit as he threw. Got to chase Miller again, and they are really working Miller on that right sideline. He has three catches in the quarter. Gets about half of what they needed back and will bring up third down. And Miller has just been a workhorse this drive. If it ain't broke, do not fix it. And Miller is really the focal point of this offense. It looks like that's going to be the last play of the quarter. Good one here on Friday Night Rivals. Both teams with a score in the second quarter, a scoreless third. And Bishop England, a couple of interceptions for Charlie Rainey, believing. Woodland unbeaten, 3-0. Bishop England trying to pull off the upset. Fourth quarter coming up. Tight win on Daniel Island tonight. Woodland 8, Bishop England 3. Both teams with a score in the second quarter. And the Bishops knocking on the proverbial door. Third and six to start the fourth. In all likelihood, four down territory. Decker. Little counter play and Woodland sniffed it out. Almost taking the handoff. With Dixon Hardy. It was the linebacker. Might have been Chance Green or DJ Blanding. Popped in there and he sets up fourth and long. And Bishop England. Looks like they're going to kick it. We'll take the field goal. With this kicking game, why wouldn't you? Yeah. And he's been so, automatic all day. Did you just do the broadcaster's curse? For, 20, uh, for, for 36 uh, yards, a little chip shot. There we no go. Curse. There we go. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> David Craig knocks it through. I would add and this. Bishop England, it's second field goal of the night, and it's 8-6. to six. I would have this whole stadium on me if, they, if I <laughs> curse the kicker there, but Kevin came through. B.E. gets another field goal, first score of the Second half for either team, and the battling bishops are within two here in the fourth on Friday Night Rivals. Bishop England try to kick their way through Woodland here tonight. Pull off the upset. Pick up their second win of the season. Woodland trying to improve to 4-0. and 
as both of these teams wind toward region play. Craig going to hit this one deep into the night. Taken at the one. Furry out across the 10-15. Winds it out right. And it'll be shoved out of bounds just shy of the 30-yard line. Pretty solid return there for the Wolverines. They'll have good field position to start this drive. Let's go look at Levante Furry. Just a freshman. He's got a bright future. Yeah, definitely. Furry has been one of those Furry has been one of those players today that has just uh He's got that speed. He's, he's got that speed. We've seen him a little bit on offense. And in the kick return game, too, he's had a lot of good kicks, uh, some 30, 40-yard returns. And, yeah, as a freshman, when you're able to do that, you can you got a lot to grow on, especially in a Woodland program that has been very good these past couple of years. Well, if you're Woodland, you want to go to your bread and butter here, you want to get back to that ground game, and you want to lean on that massive offensive line. This is Harrison finding room out near first down yardage, and I think he'll have one. Out just shy of the 40-yard line. That's exactly exactly what you said. Take the big offensive line. And it's the first down here by West Shore Homes uh, behind Harrison. West Shore Homes, America's most admired home remodeling brand. Uh, and speaking of brand, of fo- uh, brand, that's their brand of football. Get behind that line, lineman and run. And especially considering Harrison throwing a couple picks today hasn't been the most confident. It's a guy. He's really confident when he's on his feet, and that's what it looks like they're going to go to here on this drive. It's going to be Harrison and Simmons. Basically the same play, just a little quarterback keeper, and Harrison slips down as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard or two. Second down and nine upcoming. B.E. has shown a passing game. They've had the big play to Miller. They've been able to work the sidelines a little bit, a lot to Miller. And so they can throw it a little bit, but a timely drive here that ends in a score would be huge for Woodland. I mean, you need to put up points if you're Woodland. It's two-point game. Field goal could win in. The base on the way, uh, Kevin Craig has been playing for Bishop England. You don't have to get too, that too, or too close to the goalpost to get him in field goal range. So Bishop England needs some, or Woodland, excuse me, needs some points. Simmons takes it on the little dive play from the shotgun and gets out near first down yardage. And near midfield, give him almost a full 10 yards. It'll be a first down. David Aylor Law Office's replay, dragging tacklers. Look at that, Malden around his waist. Wow. And Woodland moves the sticks. That's getting in the gym and working on those quads for sure. Not quite the offense we're used to from Woodland today, though. They're averaging 50 points a game. They've been beating teams almost by 20 every single game. And this is the biggest test we've seen them in so far. But it's moments like these where you want your big players to step up. All right, Harrison. Almost tackled himself there. Had space both directions. Couldn't decide which way to go. And crosses midfield, but probably could have picked up four or five. Ended up with only two. Sedarian Harrison has been everything that was advertised today. His coach, Eddie Ford, telling us he's the team MVP right now. Reigning Offensive Player of the Week in the area. And he had a block earlier in the year that kind of changed the tone of this team. They were in trouble against Bluffton. Ran a little lead play. He gets out in front somehow and ends up getting downfield and makes a big block. The whole sideline goes wild. <laughs> and with the guys they have on the offensive line, he's the one that makes the hit that really got that game turned around for him. They go on to beat Bluffton, and now they're 3-0 and trying to drive their way to 4-0 and right here on this very drive. Yeah. And starting to pick up chunk yardage. Second and eight brings up third and two. It's almost like there's, like there's a couple of massive offensive tackles out there that I wonder, Woodland's starting to rely on. Let me on. see if I can try and point them out in the huddle. Oh, yeah, no, I see Cam Pringle over there. He's the one that's twice the size of everybody on the right. <laughs> and those of you just joining us, just catching the end of a tight high school football game here on my TV, Charleston, Cam Pringle, number 77, near side of the line, is a big-time high school recruit. Well, the top offensive tackles in the junior class have has offers from literally everyone. And he's going to play big-time college football. 
Harrison has the first down. Woodland starting to lean a little bit. Flag comes in late. That could be a huge penalty. Yeah, we, we, we've talked about it all game. Woodland is going to methodically drive down, uh, use those big offensive tackles, those All-Americans and uh, Cam Pringle, and it is going to be a penalty, it looks like, on Bishop England, which is good for Woodland, it gives him the first down, and if you're if you're BE, you got to start wondering, you've got to really hunker down on this run game because... A touchdown here could put it out of reach. So West Shore Homes first down, America's most admired home remodeling brand, with a little bit of extra chunk change from what looked like a a penalty from someone on the D-line for uh, Bishop England. So the face mask penalty moves it 15 yards, and Woodland... They've taken about four minutes off this fourth quarter clock, and they've driven it now inside the red zone. And Pringle, the pancake <laughs> block on the gain of nine by Simmons. He's, he's, he said, "Welcome to IHOP. This is the inner, this is the Cam Pringle House of Pancakes." <laughs> no free advertising. <laughs> it's a good thing the good thing Cam Pringle House of Pancakes doesn't exist. <laughs> I don't know if there's that many pancakes out there. <laughs> Second and three, Woodland knocking on the door. This offensive line has gone to work on this drive. Gardner in motion. This is Simmons bouncing it. Simmons gets to the edge. Simmons scores. Touchdown, Wolverines. They pounded and pounded, and B.E. finally broke. But give credit where credit is due. The bread and butter for this Woodland offense has been the offensive line, and it was on this drive. And look at the here's the replay presented by presented by Crew Chevrolet, and look at him, he, uh, Simmons or Harrison. It's actually, excuse Harrison. Me. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought he gave it to Simmons. No, Harrison keeps it himself. Watching it live, I thought he gave it to Simmons, and I missed it. Harrison kept it. He, little, he took it in. He's got those juke moves at the end too that are just. So nice. Second rushing TD of the night for Sedarian Harrison. We haven't talked about this young lady tonight. Erin Carrera in to attempt the PAT. She has not missed a PAT this season. And she makes it 15 of 15. We will talk about her after the break. Erin Carrera puts Woodland up by... Nine, two-possession game. Sedarian Harrison doing it all for the Wolverines. He has another touchdown run. Woodland leads by two scores midway third, midway fourth quarter. There's a good look at Aaron Carrera. We didn't know if we were going to talk about her tonight, but she comes in. The 15th point is huge because it makes it a two-possession game, 15 of 15 on PATs this year. She's one of a number of female kickers and football players around the low country. There's a big article about her in the, in the Post and Courier yesterday. Her sister also kicked at really? Woodland, her sister, Sydney. She also plays volleyball and soccer. It's not unusual for her to have a volleyball match and football practice on the same day. She's also the top student in the junior class at Woodland bright future ahead for that young lady and she might have the most important point in this game so far here tonight i mean you're right wow first off multi-sport athlete as we see a little bit of a pooch kick here yeah, a little chip kick and running room for a moment but good field position to start this drive for bishop england but they need to score twice bob you know a little bit of everything happens at high school football games little bit behind the scenes stuff what i can tell you is about the bishop england players you can't tell who's on the first string and second string because everybody's head is in this game and they're all cheering each other on one thing that was funny was a little kid was on the sidelines trying to get the coach's attention during their last drive right before the field goal and i thought something was wrong but it turns out he just wanted some money for candy <laughs> hey when a kid wants some candy it doesn't matter if we're in the fourth quarter of a pretty intense game he's gonna go talk to his pops about that B.E. a short throw and catch to Chase Miller as 
Pampu comes back in, and Miller has his fourth catch here of the second half. Cruz Chevrolet replay. Nice block by Rooney. Nice throw and catch by Pampu. We've been talking about Miller a lot, and if, if Bishop England, they need to get some points fast because you're thinking you're down nine, you're going to need to score, and then you're going to need to get the ball back once again to score on offense or to try and tie this game up. Pampu looking for Miller again. He runs the little out route. And just off his hands on the near sideline. I believe, I, you know, Chase Miller, he's listed at six foot. Standing up here in the press box, he looks like he's about 6'3". <laughs> and uh, I might give him a couple of shots up top. I might pick up the first down and throw him a couple up top. No, you. he's been he's been the guy who's been going up and grabbing those, those, lo, those long throws and the ones that are a little high. And you know, why not? It's I know it's third down here, but if you can get the first down here, take a shot downfield. He's been your guy all game. Don't stray away from him now. A little bit of an option look. If you know Georgia Southern or old Air Force football under Fisher to Barry, this option formation will look f- familiar to you. And they just take the dive, take their two or three yards. Woodland stacks it up, but the first down is there. And a new set of downs for BE, but they need to score twice. And yeah. now they'll go back to a little bit more of a spread look. Yeah, I mean, now that you got Pampu back, Zeke, you got to think. I mean, you saw the one drive he was in. They went down the field in four plays. And granted, they did fumble at the end, but you got to wonder. You got to start getting points on. You got to do it quick. Pampu takes that deep shot to Miller we were talking about. Defended nicely and knocked away by Clarence Simmons. Simmons, we would, in our first game, Fort Dorchester and Beaufort, we talked about one of the safeties, Carpenter, for Fort Dorchester, that he was the guy that was going to need the most ice on Saturday morning. The guy that's going to sleep the best tonight, a different type of award, Clarence Simmons. The guy has been on the field almost every snap, running back corner, running back corner. And, he, and he's and he been involved. They've been handing the ball off to him a lot. And there's I think that's the third or fourth play we've seen where – they're either going for Miller, whoever he's guarding on that play, and he gets his hand in there. He's an active cornerback. He's not just going to sit back and play zone. He's going to be right up in your grill. So, yeah, he's going to sleep well. <laughs> Pampu rolls left, dumps it up field, and Decker couldn't come up with it. That's one that Decker would probably like to have back, Pampu as well. That was, that was there for six or seven yards, and that will bring up third down and ten. B.E. has put up a fight tonight. We talked about it earlier in the game and some in the third quarter. Both these teams very banged up. Yep. Missing key starters on both sides of the ball. This Bishop England offensive line is missing tackle Joe Shores. Got hurt last week. Probably out for a week or two. Could be back next week against Phillip Simmons, but might be another couple weeks. And then you also have Pampu. He was injured, but we were able to get to see a little bit of Pampu today. And now we're going to show you the Friday Night Rivals coolest play of the game, sponsored by Holy City uh, cool, Heating and Air. And this has got to be one of the turning point of the game and would really open up the scoring for Woodland. Harrison, stiff arm, get out of the way. I'll drag you in. And just a great play by Harrison. Got Woodland all on the board, and they haven't looked back since. It has been the Sedarian Harrison show, and Sedarian Harrison, of course, brings us our coolest play of the game. Holy City Heat and Ayers, cool play of the game. Well, the quarterback, he might have to be considered for a second straight week for offensive player of the week yeah. in the area. He's he's a special little football player. I'm Senior, have to think he's going to play somewhere next season. And it, yeah, you got to think he's going to play somewhere next season. And if it wasn't for a guy by the name of uh, Charlie Rainey. He would have almost a perfect game today, but Bishop England, now it's their turn to make some offense happen. Pampu, an option look, a late pitch. Woodland stretches it out. Nice pursuit to the far side of the field. A flag comes in late. That's kind of in the area of either a holding or a face mask. If this is on Woodland, this could be a huge play for the Bishops. And regardless, Zeke, they're, they're in four-down territory now. There's they're clearly why they're doing a little bit of a pitch play there. Time out for an injured player. Yeah, 
And they'll call a holding penalty or illegal use of the hands. On Bishop England, so that'll back up the Bishop. Good look at the fan cam here, font sponsored by Fan Zone. Student section has thinned a little bit. Cheerleaders still here in full force. Really good crowd tonight here at Bishop England for Friday Night Rivals. Fan cam sponsored by Fan Zone. All your sports teams gear under one roof. And then uh, the fans who are staying here, they still got a chance. That penalty, that uh, holding penalty definitely did not help. And if I were Bishop England, you got to take a shot here. You got to try something deep. On that uh, last deep throw when they went for Miller, they ended up having Dixon Hardy down the middle, uh, splitting the safety. So send them on some streaks, maybe some crossing patterns, try to get those safeties mixed up and make a big play. Up the seam it goes. Nice throw and catch. Decker caught it in stride. They'll get 15 back, and that'll bring up a huge fourth down. Great job. Javon Neals, yeah. Nice tackle in the open field. He didn't make that tackle. Decker might score, and this game really gets interesting. Yeah. But instead, key play of the game here. Fourth down and eight. For Woodland, it has been Harrison all night. Who will step up for the Bishops? And basically need the 35-yard line. Chase Miller's been the big go-to receiver in the second half. Watch the crossing route across the middle. Time. Hampu takes the shot, gives Miller the jump ball, and he brought it down at the 11. Oh, I've been asking for it. Finally got it. Miller the big catch at the 11. And this one just got exciting. West Shore Holmes first down for the battling Bishops, but fourth and eight converted. And we got a ball game. Wow, if you look at this replay here by Khrushchev, like, go up and get it, Miller. And that was probably his best catch of the day. Defender draped on him, and we, we talked about it. It was Clarence Simmons, too, who's been all over the place. And when you need a big play, you get it from Miller. Probably the biggest play of the game for Bishop England keeps them in it, and now they got to put some points on the board. Pampu rolling right, defenders everywhere, tries to stuff it in there at the pylon, and it's incomplete for Miller. Miller's got to be near, we don't have official stats, but Miller has to be pushing 100 yards receiving in the second half. Has four or five catches, three of them being at least 25 yards. B.E. can take a field goal here. But probably would prefer the touchdown. You got to think about timing wise. Four minutes left in the game. If you score a touchdown here, let's say you get some three and outs, you got your timeouts left. You'd rather, with less time on the clock, you'd rather want to get just getting field goal range, not to the end zone. Pampu, little out route complete. Going to be short of the first down, down inside the 10, but it sets up third and manageable. Now another John Canty might have a decision to make if you don't pick this one up, but you would like to have this one. It's a cool little high school venue, isn't it? I love this stadium. I, I, was, I was talking to one of our colleagues in the production team earlier, and it's just a beautiful location, and uh, really the way the, the, the stands are set up, too, you really feel like you're on the field. Third and four, where will B.E. go? Two receivers either side. Pampu, blitz comes. Pampu escapes. Scampers oh. up the left sideline and scores. It looked like he might run out of real estate, but B.E., their first touchdown of the night, and it couldn't come at a better time. Safe to say Marco Pampu's back. He is back and in business scoring. Probably the most important touchdown of the day. Look at this. Scrambling around. He got defenders diving at him. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. He looked forward. He said, oh, I got a free run to the end zone. And that is the difference Pampu has made. Ever since he has come in in the second half, he has ignited this offense. And that run has been has got Bishop England right back in this game. 15-12 now. Craig on for the PAT. Pampu with his first touchdown of the season. Trying to technical touchdown. Your future. Your college. 
Snap was a little high, but Poole, William Poole, nice job of getting it down. Craig knocks it through. We have a two-point game. He didn't think about it at the time, but that two-point conversion on Woodland's first touchdown late in the first quarter is looming very large right now. Yeah, definitely. If you if you think about it too, if they had if they had as now we go to our, our front end rival stop of the game, this is a big play too. You had uh, you had Bishop England driving. Uh, Zach Rooney reaches over and he and right when he looked goes to reach it over. You have Chance Green coming in, forcing the fumble. And Woodland, in that play, think about it, too. You talk about the two-point conversion for Woodland. Well, if they don't get that stop and Bishop England gets in there, we're talking about Woodland needing a score on this drive. And now with that stop of the game, uh, Woodland is in much better position, just needs a couple first downs to run this out. Will Lou Gray never stop learning. Stop of the game. That's the key play in this football game right now. Aaron Pullian, I believe, was the linebacker who came up with it for Woodland. Little chip shot up the far sideline, scoots into the end zone, and Woodland will have to go to work from their 20. Nice deep kick there by the Bishops. Well, Sedarian Harrison, or is it going to be Bishop England, Tampu, and by committee? I was about to ask you, Zeke, I wonder what plays they're going to run on this <laughs> drive. And keyword, run. Uh, you've got that big offensive line, and this is why you have them on the team, why you have the Cam Pringles, why you have the James Mosleys, the Gannon Kelplers, those big boys on the inside. This is the whole reason that <laughs> you have them on the field for plays like this where you need to get some first downs, you need to chew some clock, you need to protect the ball if you're Woodland. Simmons and Harrison. They'll start it with a run for Harrison. Still plenty of time on the clock, and Harrison pops it. Harrison across the 40 and near midfield, 28 yards on snap number one on this drive. We haven't had a ton of excitement on Friday Night Rivals this year. A quagmire last week. Fort Dorchester Beaufort was a good game to start the season, but this one by far the best. What finish are we in for? And if there is going to be someone who puts their stamp on this finish, it's going to be Sedarian Harrison. And you saw it right there. Try to true first play. He breaks one off for about for a little over 20 yards. And you, if you're Bishop England, you need to focus on stopping him. I will let one of the other running backs beat me, but Harrison cannot beat us with his legs. Blitz comes, a little extra pressure, popping free for a couple of yards and across midfield to Simmons, still churning. <laughs> and Pringle. <laughs> and then Pringle at the end just moves everybody another 15 feet. <laughs> yeah, he, said, he said, okay, I'll get this pile down. <laughs> Got to make sure if he, a guy that size, if he's going to hit a pile, he needs to hit somebody on the other team because he's going to hurt his own player. Yeah, no. He's going to hurt somebody. No, no. I imagine what I imagine what practices are like when you you got to go up against Cam Pringle every day. Uh, I would be taking lots of ice baths. It just sounds like a bad idea for somebody. <laughs> so the, the an eight-yard gain on first down. It went for about three for Simmons, and then the pile was pushed for five, and the clock quickly less of a factor. Each team with two timeouts remaining. You gotta wonder they're gonna hand it off down the middle again. Go behind that O line. You need to stack the box here. Harrison kept it. Harrison first down. Harrison extra inside the 35. I keep seeing something, and it's a ball on the far sideline that I keep seeing go in the air, and I keep thinking it's a flag coming in. It's Bob. Bob was telling us they're throwing footballs everywhere. <laughs> So Woodland trying to run out the clock. They've moved it onto the B.E. side of the field. Bishops with two more timeouts. And that is a huge first down pickup. Harrison, he has got what I like to call sauce. He's got the moves that can slide him out of sticky situations. He's He's got, he's got the full package when it comes to being able to throw and run the ball. And 
if I'm if I'm Woodland, I'm keep feeding him. Simmons takes the give. Simmons bounces off a tackler and gets help. And now we have a scrum after about a gain of five. And John Canty will use one of his two remaining timeouts. Time now for our crew Chevrolet drive of the game. Tonight's drive of the game. The one we're currently on. I beg your pardon. Earlier, Simmons and Harrison, the one-two punch to get the key touchdown and take the two-possession lead. So Darren Harrison's been most electric player on the football field tonight. He has two rushing touchdowns, and that one huge moments ago to make it 15-6 and give Woodland a two-touchdown lead. He's just so elusive when he has the ball in his hands, but you're right, that drive was crucial. Bishop England just came down, made it a two-point game, uh, and could have beat him with field goals, and now Woodland, they get down, they take the lead, and now they're, they're in this position because of the touchdown they scored on that drive. That was the drive of the game, Cruz Chevrolet drive of the game. Cruz Chevrolet on Rivers, you have a friend in the car business. And this is what it comes down to. You got you got Woodland who I don't think uh, you're not in four down territory. I mean, unless you get all the way up to that first down marker where maybe you can try and sneak it. But for Bishop England, two plays, two stops, and you're back in it. Simmons over the right side. Simmons near first down yardage. It'll set up probably third and one as they run behind the right side of that line where Nikki and Mosley and B.E. asked for another timeout. Later tonight, after this football game, we'll present a trophy. And earlier this evening, we told you who the scholar athletes were. Tonight's trophy and the Scholar Athlete plaques at the end of the season are provided by All-American Awards. All-American Awards helping Charleston recognize excellence since 1993. So third and one for Woodland. 86 seconds remaining. Bishop England out of timeouts. A first down probably does it. Yep. You're going to need to stack the box here. But if you're Woodland, you can either run it up the middle with Simmons or you can toss it outside. I'm going to try to get to our cheer of the game. There's a look at the Bishop England cheerleaders. They're our winners of cheer of the game tonight. I'm going to see if we can play that cheer for you in just a moment in case we get another stoppage. Minute 26 to play. Woodland needs... A yard. Harrison keeps it. Harrison going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Wolverines. So Darian Harrison, his third rushing touchdown of the night. He has been as good as advertised. Wow. In a moment where Bishop England couldn't give up anything, spotlights on Woodland. Harrison takes it to the house. A little uh -uh, juke move at the line of scrimmage. And he's got the hat trick for touchdowns tonight. Wow, he's just a special player. So Darian Harrison, three rushing touchdowns. As Coach Eddie Ford called him the uh, team MVP to this point in the season. I, uh, I think that's going to hold for one more week. Yeah, he's definitely. Well over 100 yards rushing tonight, probably closer to that buck 50, buck 60 mark. He has three rushing touchdowns. Looks like they're going to go for two here. They're not going to kick the PAT. I don't think they want to chance it. With no timeouts for BE, just a little keep play. And actually yeah. handed to Gardner, and Gardner on a little half Statue of Liberty takes it in. That should just about do it. Woodland gets the two-point conversion all the way on the misdirection. And it's now a ten-point lead for the Wolverines as Sedarian Harrison I think he's going to be candidate for player of the game. Yeah, I would say there's a good chance of that. Uh, 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I guess they went for two because they they felt more confident with their two point play than than possibly having a blocked kick or anything like that. But that'll pretty much put it out of reach. So Woodland and Bishop England trade late touchdown. Sedaria Harrison and that massive offensive line for the Wolverines just proved to be a little too much. And you heard Eddie Ford. He had the laundry list about what he loved about his team. Great offseason. Physical group on both lines. Man, mm. are they. Mm-hmm. They play hard, and they're good sports. And this team had a chance to really hang their head a minute ago on a late touchdown, and they have it. And they are, in all likelihood, 79 seconds from improving to 4 and 0. Oh. Little pooch kick, fair catch asked for at the 40. And now time for our player of the game. Cannot imagine who it's going to be. I have no idea, Zeke. Who do you think it is? Oh, it's a Darian Harrison. <laughs> Harrison, three rushing touchdowns, has really been special. He was the Low Country Offensive Player of the Week last week. You have to think he's going to be at the top of the list again this week. And his latest rushing touchdown probably put this one in the W column for Woodland. Play of the game sponsored by TEC Equipment Rental. This season's end zone scissor lift is provided by TEC Equipment Rental. We rent the good stuff. Just is knocked down over the middle and incomplete intended for Miller. Simmons again on that play. Uh, going back to Harrison, I mean, when you have an offensive line that has the likes of Cam Pringle and some of the other big boys there and then you have behind it a quarterback who's as shifty and elusive as Harrison Woodland's gonna be a tough team to beat they watch out in November once we get to those two-way brackets because this Woodland team doesn't look like they're slowing down anytime soon yeah there's no doubt this Woodland team's gonna be a handful in 2A little crossing route complete for six or seven and i wouldn't be surprised to see bishop england turn the corner remember tampu really his first game back first action back in almost two years tonight outside of some scrimmage snaps trying to pick up the third down here rolls right and is going to be sacked thrown down and that'll bring up fourth down here in our final minutes be is going to have a nice season too Mm -hmm. they're trying to get healthy for region play they get an offensive tackle back they get their quarterback back they get a a running back back, their best one, Weston Peterson, in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And and Pampu has been a big reason that they even got back in this game in the first place. In the few plays that we have seen Pampu in this game, he's looked great. He's Obviously, there's some growing pains of getting back on the field, having that much time off. But from what I've seen, if they can get him back on the field in consistent fashion, once they get down to that playoff time, they can start to turn things around and they should not, for holding a Woodland, their defense too, I, I think we have, we have we we talk a lot about their offense, but their defense really stepped up in this game. And although they're going to come up a little bit short, holding Woodland, a team that has scored nearly 50 points every game, to 23 points, and basically if you take out the last quarter, held them to eight points for the entire game, it's a great showing for this defense that uh, worked really hard against this Woodland offensive line. And Bishop England gets another tough test next week. Philip Simmons, we saw them last week. They're a good football team. Yeah, tough They're game. 3A, and Bishop England's 2A. B is definitely scheduled up this season. And so is Woodland. Well, that's the most uh, basic place that Harrison <laughs> has had to make tonight. Sneaks under center, takes the knee, and this one's going to taste pretty good for Eddie Ford and company. Most basic play, but probably the favorite play for the Woodland Wolverines tonight as they set up the victory formation here uh, here in Bishop England. Woodland kneels it out. Sedarian Harrison taking the final snap. John Canty, there's a good look at him. He and Eddie Ford will meet at midfield. Both these two coaches really put together nice game plans tonight. And in the end, Sedarian Harrison, the difference maker, maybe that offensive line with Pringle and Mosley, just a little too much for Bishop England. Two coaches meet. Always good to see that handshake. Always good, yeah. And you, as far as Friday Night Rivals go, I think this has been the best one we've had through four weeks. Yeah, definitely. Good one here tonight on week number four of Friday Night Rivals. 
Woodland wins it 23 to 10 over Bishop England. We'll take a break. Be back to present a trophy. Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Trophy time on Friday Night Rivals. Woodland a winner. They remain perfect 4-0 and on the season. In 2A, Bishop England falls to 1-4. and Woodland wins it tonight 23-13. Sedarian Harrison, the star, three rushing touchdowns for him this evening. And it's always fun to give kids trophies. They enjoy it. The Woodland Wolverines excited about it coming their way. Let's go down to the sideline to Bob. All right, Coach. You had eight points on the board before before halftime. What did you tell your team at halftime to get their head in the game and start pulling away in the second half? We just wasn't playing Wolverine football, and we had to have a little come to Jesus back there, and it obviously it worked. We did a great job. I want to give you a trophy. You. Congratulations on the big win. It's fun to be handed a trophy. Sedarian Harrison, the first one to touch the trophy after the big win for the Wolverines tonight. Good one here on Friday Night Rivals. Reminder, join ABC News 4, Scotty Eisberg and Natalie Spala on Low Country uh, on Friday Night Rivals tonight at 11.05. They'll have scores and highlights from throughout the Low Country. Next week, we're in Hanahan for week number five of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet as the Hawks play host to Porter Gowd. Special thanks to our entire production crew here on site and back in Houston tonight for Sean Mahoney and Trooper Bob. I'm Zeke Beam. So long from Bishop England High School here on Daniel Island. Woodland wins it 23 to 13. We'll see you next week on Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet.